We live in a time where building or configuring your PC has become easier than ever before. It's a relatively straightforward process when selecting the main components such as the processor, GPU and RAM, where the higher tier model depicts the performance level of the part. For example, an Intel Core i7 is better than an i5, an RTX 4080 is better than 4060, and 32 gigs of RAM is obviously better than 16. But when it comes to motherboards, it's not exactly clear what benefits a Z790 Hero, for example, has over a Z790 Prime, which is almost half the price or even less. So let's start with the easy and straightforward points. Higher-end motherboards usually have more M.2 slots at a higher bandwidth for higher speed SSDs, support for higher speed RAM, which ties into the increased power phases available, a point I'll talk about in more details a bit later, and additional USB headers as well as I.O. on the back of the board for more devices and better case I.O. compatibility. For example, some cases have four USB 3.0 headers, which require two USB 3.0 sockets on your motherboard. And last but not least is the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which is possible to get on some lower-end boards, but always available as standard on higher-end ones. Now we can talk about the less obvious parts, such as the power delivery, which is a critical point when it comes to higher-end boards. The power architecture on a board depicts the amount and stability of the power being delivered to the processor. This is all done through MOSFETs, chokes, and capacitors, which you'll find more of on a higher-end board compared to a lower-end one. A Z790 Hero, for example, has 18 plus 1 MOSFETs compared to a Z790P, which has 14 plus 1. Additionally, the components and materials are also superior for a longer lifespan and better heat tolerance, which is critical for overclocking. And that's where it all comes into play. The whole point of a better power architecture is to allow the processor to reach higher clock speeds and maintain stability while being pushed to its limits. The issue here, however, is that modern high-end CPUs such as the 14900K are limited by temperature rather than power. You'll first need to make sure you have a proper cooling system that can keep the CPU temperatures at lower than 90C before you can increase the voltage and clock speed to push out that extra bit of performance. And that's a challenge in itself, because even the highest end of coolers have proven to have difficult time accomplishing this task, hence requiring you to go the extra mile and looking for more ways to increase the cooling capacity available. This can include a custom loop and probably even de-lidding with a direct die block, but that's a loophole I don't wish to get into in this video. That concludes the main aspects of comparing a higher-end board to a mid-tier one. Design and aesthetics can also be a factor in choosing the one right for you, as well as some extra features like the easy PCI unlock button for GPUs, better networking, and audio performance depending on the board model. So in conclusion, the board doesn't really have a big impact on the performance of a PC. I'd actually argue it's negligible, except for those looking to overclock and push out every last bit of available performance. Otherwise, the main benefits would be the extra available I.O. and the M.2 slots for better future proofing. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a like and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll catch you on the next one.